Welcome to KM Best's Metagame 101 class. Welcome to Metagame 101. Let's talk about the decks in the current meta. Let's talk about what you can play. Let's talk about why you can play it. So, uh, starting with, I think the, the, the people may say you should start with a Leech Leader deck. I'll start with why the Leech Leader deck is good. We're starting here. This deck absolutely demolishes anything trying to explode on turn six. Just crushes it. You play wave on five, you play a bunch of freebies late. It forces anyone who wants to compete on turn six to play leader. Now that can include decks that want to play leader uh, defensively or offensively, right? So you have you have this version of the deck. I, like the specific cards in it don't really matter beyond death, wave, that whole package, right? Like you the space it occupies in the metagame is basically the same. You beat the shit out of things that explode on turn six, and then you lose to leader. That is the space you occupy in the metagame when you play a deck like this, right? You also have some trouble with Cosmo and armor, but it's not like insurmountable trouble now that She-Hulk exists. So like that would be what I would consider like when you ask why the metagame is the way it is, the answer is because that deck is so strong right now. Uh, and then you go from there to, I think, here which is Dara's Leecher deck. We're playing a little, we're playing things that aren't Leech, but like this is the sort of the answer, right? You play just a ton of control tools and but, but control in Marvel Snap at this point in, the t at, in time just means be really ahead, then play Arrow or Leader. That's what control means right now. Control refers to just being ahead, then playing one of the cards that ends the game when you're really ahead. And so one of the things that you'll notice is these are all just like above rate cards, yeah? This is like a one a million if you want it to be. This is like a two seven. This one protects your one a million. It's actually like armor, sunspot are like the two most flex cards in this deck, in my opinion. Lizard's a two five. Thor is a three ten. Maximus is a three seven. We do the Sheree in order to play a five fourteen or a five sixteen. We play White Queen, who is a four six who draws a card, right? Like, this is, it, it's actually just stats. What control means right now, in as much as this is a control deck, I almost think it's a misnomer. This is a deck that plays to be ahead and then play one of the cards that says you win the game if you're ahead. That's it. That's what you do. It's Jund. Or really, it's like cruel ultimatum control. You just, you just, you just, you play the card and then it's like, oh, okay. Well, there goes that. So then there are other decks that exist in the metagame. The reason the Leech was important in this list was because of this. Leech is a really good way to beat up on a deck that relies on something like Silver Surfer on turn six, right? This would make good content for a YouTube video. I think I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm jittering a little too much. I'm just hoping people like this. Uh, the, uh... The issue that this deck presents is if you aren't doing Silver Surfer to break leader symmetry, you're just losing the game. And so that's why Leech is important to beat this. If this deck rises back up in popularity, Leech might have to come back into that original deck, right? So you this these are sort of, as I see it, the, the pillars of the metagame are, are something like this, something like this, and something like this, which it's another leader arrow deck. It's doing the exact same thing. It's just, it's the answer is be ahead, play the cards that win the game when you're ahead. That's it. That's all these decks do. Like you call them control decks. I, I, I think people do that because they're like, take a lot of thought to play, which is true. But fundamentally what you're doing is be ahead, Play the card that says you win the game if you're ahead. That's what you're doing. That's what these decks both do. Now, there are like plenty of other versions of that, right? Like here's uh, here's the Daredevil version, right? Which in order to be ahead and then play one of the cards that says you win the game abuses Daredevil and Professor X, which I think gives up a little bit of snap equity, but what can you do, right? And so all of these decks get referred to as control, but they're not control. They're just... 
they're just like the 10 best cards in the game and then arrow and leer to close the door right just the 10 best on curve threats that exist and there are different like perspectives on what that means right like because leader is so reliant on board space he has a lot of symmetry a lot of synergy with dino because dino is basically the biggest fucking thing you can do just like the biggest fucking thing you can do just the the largest guy for the smallest space investment right leader wants you to have less space than your opponent and di and also be ahead and dino is really good at having less space than your opponent and also be ahead and so like when you look at what we're doing with the sharee stuff here it's the exact same thing less space be ahead that's it right so that's like sort of the pillar of the metagame or are these decks like the leader deck the leech deck occupies the exact same space as the dino deck they're both doing the same thing and they're the best decks in the game because of it because what they're doing fundamentally is just we're playing 10 really strong on curve cards the goal is to use less space but have more power than our opponent and then play one of the cards that says you win the game if you fit that that's that's what's happening now there are other like ways to attack this right like this deck is what made them have to play Leech, basically, right? Uh, but, like, something like Classic Sarah. You look at Classic Sarah, right? And it's just, like, if you're not breaking the symmetry with a Shang-Chi or a Mysterio on the final turn, you're always losing to Leader. And part of the reason why this list, I think, is still playable is because it has Mysterio and Shang-Chi as ways to break Leader Symmetry. You have Bishop as ways to break Leader Symmetry. You have the Nova thing as a way to break Leader Symmetry. Like, these are things that make you able to play into Leader where another Point Slam deck would be fundamentally incapable of doing so. Does that make sense? Another, another Point Slam deck... Like, if you're investing in Sarah, you're going to be behind on turn six, and you're going to be looking to explode late, right? And that just that, that just means you lose to leader every single time. You just absolutely lose to leader every single time. And this deck has, like, a couple of edge cases that allow you to play around it, but I wouldn't expect it to be favored in the matchup, right? And so you... Then there are, like, other decks, right? So because there's this sort of inbred metagame happening, right? Here's another deck that Leech covers you against big time if people if people wanted like leech covers you so hard in this matchup leech covers your leech is like saving your ass in this matchup any of the games any of the the decks like this that are just like wong bullshit because you don't play cosmo or whatever right what's inbred metagame uh like inbred meaning like incestuous not like inside bread uh, so you have this, you have this situation where Leech is actually there to, like, be either big Cosmo or small leader, depending on how you look at it. And I'll get to questions afterwards. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to run through this to, like, get people to understand where, why we are where we are right now. So then there are, like, decks like the like the wong deck right the wong deck thrives in situations where the hate cards for the wong deck don't exist in the metagame and the hate cards for the wong deck are leech cosmo things like that things that just like absolutely absolutely take a shit on everything you're trying to do they just like turn your deck off you're like the deck is off now it's done right and those cards exist as safety valves for the metagame but like if you really think about it this deck is kind of doing stronger things than most other decks are. So, like, things like that have to exist, right? So what's happening is the Wong decks get hosed by, like, Cosmo and Leech. Cosmo, by the way, according to Snap.Fan, is the third most played card in the game at about 25% of decks will include Cosmo. So that is a significant a significant portion of the metagame that just plays a card that just, just shits all over you. You can't win if you're playing that, right? That is, like, one of the most played cards in the metagame just ends your ends your entire career, right? For context, Leader is, like, the 30th most played card. Cosmo is third, right? You'd be better off playing a deck that loses to Leader than playing a deck that loses to Cosmo. Which card is the most played? I actually haven't checked. If you'd like to, you can check. 
So then you have like decks like this, which in my opinion are a little underrated. You look at like Ongoing Destroyer, it's just chugging along. It's just chugging along. It's a fine deck. It does good things. It's a decent list to play. You're probably going to be fine. Uh, it is only pool three decks, I believe. I'm not sure. Onslaught Snap, thank you for the tier one sub. Thank you. Uh, when I was looking at the numbers, I sorted it by pool three, but it's possible their card data didn't sort by pool three. Who knows? Anyway, this deck exists in the context of you just want to you just want to be in every game. This deck will get you in every game. I see the curls redeems. I'm doing the lecture though. I see the curls redeems here. I'm, I'm with you. This deck will get you in every game. You can it, it, it is honestly underrated because it is a functional way to break leader symmetry. It is a deck with a bunch of hate cards in it, and it is incredibly fucking boring to play. Just incredibly boring to play. But you will collect some dubs there if you play that deck. Now, that's pretty much what I would describe as the metagame right now. There's the leader decks, there's Death Wave, there's Silver Surfer, there's the Dino decks, which... There's significant overlap between the leader decks and the dino decks, but they don't have to overlap. Uh, for example, Life Coach's Arrow deck is one of the best in the game. It doesn't run dino. I think it's probably better if it runs, or it doesn't run leader. It's, I think it's probably better if you do run leader, but apparently the win rate, the win rate gap is different, but I, I do wonder how much of that is applicable to pools. So that's, that's pretty much where we're at. You forgot about Mbaku decks, super meta AO. <laughs> like, but yeah, like that, that's, as I understand it, the metagame. And the what's happening is there are very strong synergy decks, right? Wong, Death Wave. And these super strong synergy decks. By the way, Ordinary Harry, uh, hit that exclamation point new card. I had an exper experience just like yours. Uh, these super strong synergy decks get hosed by like individual cards that are put into the game as safety valves, right? Something like Cosmo, something like Leader, something like Leech, right? These are safety valve cards, right? You saw it already? Okay. I'm glad. These are safety valves that exist to be to be uh what's the word? Hit when those cards are the strongest things you can possibly be doing. What do you do with a safety valve? You turn it on. You, what the fuck do you what do you do with a safety valve? You flip it, I don't... These are safety valves that exist to be activated <laughs> when the metagame is is doing that kind of thing, right? The safety valves ex exist to be activated when the synergy decks are too strong, right? And so people like to talk about how the safety valves are not fun, and that is true. The safety valves fucking suck. But the baseline issue is these synergy decks are way too strong. These synergy decks are way too strong, right? Like when you look at the average output of a of a of a like like when you look at the nut draw power of like a deck like this, which gets hosed by like two or three cards that are very common. But like if you are not doing that, you are winning the game. If you do not see that shit, you are winning the fucking game. If people are not cosmoing you and you go Wong Black Panther Arnim Zola, you win. You win the game. Right? Like, this is this is the reason that these cards are so popular. Is like it, it like you look at this and you look at like this, right? Like, oh, if you just do what you do, you draw a wave, you play it on five 77% of the time, or whatever the fuck, and then you just like play a bunch of a bunch of enormous ladies that beat your opponent to death every single time because you can play and they can't. Like this shit, that's exactly the point I'm making, Extasio. The cards that disrupt it are the cards people hate. But if they got rid of Leader, everyone would hate this. If they got rid of Cosmo, everyone would hate this. If they got rid of these cards that everyone hates, everyone would just hate this immediately. It would be the shittiest thing imaginable. It would be so bad if everyone was just playing like Nut Draw uh, ships in the night decks. 
Like, if you if you nerf these cards, and I, I, I do think there is something to be said for the idea of these decks being more fun to play than the other ones, just based on the volume of complaints we see. But if you nerf these cards, if you nerf cards like Leader and Cosmo, which, to be clear, I have been a huge offender in complaining about. I have been an enormous, woo, Cosmo sucks, I hate him guy. I've done that. But if you nerf them, these decks are going to run fucking rough shot over the metagame. Like, yeah, actually, I also want to see the M'Baku list, right? But, like, if you if you nerf them, things are going to get really bad. And there's an argument for, you know, they're already bad. I'll listen to that. I'll listen to an argument for they're already bad and they fucking suck. But, frankly, I think that, like, What's happening is, is these safety valve cards are being activated so quickly. Does that make sense? The only reason these safety valve cards are so good, and this is, this is leader aside, I think, because I think leader is like actually a little bit, a little bit overtuned, frankly. But the other ones like Cosmo or Leech or whatever, like, no, those are fine. Like Cosmo maybe could be like a four or five or whatever. But like Leech, Leech is totally fucking fine. Leech is totally 100% fine. Leech is a fine card to exist. There's no reason for Leech not to exist. Anyone saying that you should nerf Leech, like it, it sucks, but it has to exist. Um, so we're look like that's sort of just what the metagame is. And 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 it's these decks that run up against the safety valve. And then, and then what happens is this, right? Like, you, you, you play the Dara deck, which plays, like, all the safety valves, right? And then someone like me comes along and is like, hey, what if we take out one safety valve, in this case, Leech, for, in exchange for more power in the mirror? And that's really good. We shit on the mirror here. Like, it's impossible, basically, for us to lose a mirror. If they're playing Leech and we're playing a 14 power vision, you can't lose. It's fine. Yeah, you can post links, I think. I don't think I have an auto ban. Uh, I don't think I have a link filter. I think I would have to turn that on. Let me know if you get banned, though. Sorry if you do. Uh, but you look at this, right? And it's... Is it like a default thing? If it is default, then uh, you will get banned. If it's not a default thing, then you won't. Uh, but you look at this, right? And like what we've done is we've taken out a, a safety valve card and we've put in some power. And that means we take a huge shit all over the mirror but we lose a little bit more against Silver Surfer. And eventually, the way a metagame works is people will start doing this more. Are there enough tech cards in the game where they remove Leech and everything will be fine? I don't want them to remove Leech. I think, if anything, you just tune down Leader a little bit. I wouldn't hate, like, Cosmo going to 4 and getting a power buff. 4-5 Cosmo or something. Just taking Leader to the point where it's like not a fucking one-size-fits-all solution to turn six is kind of the issue, right? Because leader needs to li leader needs to exist or this death wave shit goes crazy. If leader doesn't exist, death wave will fuck everyone up forever. If the issue is he's just kind of also the best card to play on turn six, and that's sort of where it gets a little dicey, right? You don't want the best card to play on turn six to be some shit that everyone hates, right? So I think that's a little that like he of all of them is the diciest. But you know, your mileage may vary, right? Like, I think one thing that really sucks about leader not existing, about leader existing, is it makes Doctor Doom fucking terrible, right? Because you do all this setup to like win a closed off lane with Doctor Doom, and then someone just plays leader, and it's like, oh, why did I even fucking bother? <laughs> like, that's that's the thing I, I dislike the most about leader is not that it like shits on my my Death Wave deck. That's fine. That that's probably a good thing. But the fact that it just invalidates these, like, Doctor Doom strategies, it that does make me actually pretty sad, right? Because, like, you're investing all this 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 effort into closing off a lane and winning it with Doctor Doom, and then Leader just copies the Doom, and you're just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, it sucks so bad. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. Anyway.
That was Metagame 101. I hope you enjoyed Metagame 101. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around through Metagame 101. 